we are at the New Orleans Jazz Club in Swinging London. And the reason we're here is because Metal Hammer, our European viewers will know that magazine, our British viewers won't know it just yet, but they will soon, or so I'm told. Metal Hammer are launching the first ever issue of their British publication. I'm going inside very shortly to talk to... I'm not going to tell you whom because I've got a lot of surprises for you. But I'm going in there right now to rock, to drink beer, and mostly to talk. Come with us. Come on, come on. So here we are, still in the middle of things, at Metal Hammer's opening of their first British edition of their fine magazine. Now, I've got an old mate with me, Nico McBrain from Iron Maiden, Hi, who has just picked up no less than four Metal Hammer awards. Four? What have, yes. you, actually, what have you actually won then, Nick? Well, we've got four awards here, as you can see. Sweet Hammers, I'm going to knock the wall down first of all. <laughs> um, yes, Mike. Um, what have you got? You've got, well, best, got drummer. Best, best Drummer. Best Drummer. Me Chops, actually. And that came in number two to a German chappy. Okay. Uh, best Bass for Harry. Um, best Vocals for Bruce. And Best for Davey. Nothing uh, for Adrian, Adrian. Nothing right? for H, unfortunately. Nothing so for these Adrian. are going to be put to severe use tonight. <laughs> you know, no. Yeah, brilliant. Hey, what can I say? I'm overwhelmed. And uh, on behalf of the band and that, you know, thanks very much, everybody. And, uh, of course, we're quite lucky to have you here, Nick, because you've just started your, your latest world tour with the band all over Europe. Uh, how's it been going? Well, seriously good, I might say. Yeah, we did, uh, we did Eastern Europe and, uh, well, Yugoslavia, Hungary, um, 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 help, me out, help me out, <laughs> Poland, there you go. Yeah, that was the last gig we did. Poland, yes. Um, brilliant, 12 shows over there. They all went extremely well. We had uh, wasted out with us for the first six of the shows, right. and uh, they, they were really cooking as well. So everything's ready for the English tour. And, yeah, which is uh, just about know, to start. Which is yeah, tomorrow night, first gig in uh, Ox Oxford. I'm really looking forward to it. Do you know, it's been about a year and a half since I've seen the band play live. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the long time ago that we were here. I hardly remember the last time. Yeah. It's a long time. So tell me, do you, I mean in your spare time? Do you, I mean, do, are you a Metal Hammer reader? I, mean, I know it's always well, been in different yeah. languages. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, yeah, you know, I'm glad they've, they've actually decided to launch it in English, uh, over here in England, right. because we can read it, you know. Uh, not having the uh, etiquette of other languages, uh, I do obviously browse through it and look at the photos and everything, yeah, but right. uh, yeah, I'm well, I'm well pleased for it. It's a great magazine. Yeah. All right, well, Nick, thanks very much for talking to us. Oh, Don't go and kill anybody with your hammers. <laughs> No, I'll, 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 yeah, OK, well, we'll see. We'll see if we can find one later on for Adrian, no, eh? I think we, we, there should be one flying around somewhere later on for Adrian. All right, Nick, thanks very much. Nick, We're going to play out now on a maiden video, best. and this is Aces High. <laughs> We're inside the Metal Hammer party here in the New Orleans Jazz Club in London, and I'm lucky to have with me the three brains behind the proposition. Now, if I'm right, this is Reinhardt, who is the editor of the German Metal Hammer. Our fans all over Europe will know that one. This chap here is Metal Mike, who is the editor of Shark Metal Hammer in Holland. Our Dutch viewers will know that one. And here's the man of the moment, Mr. Harry Doherty, the editor of the British, first British That's publication me. of Metal Hammer. Now, as I say, our viewers all over Europe will no doubt be well acquainted with Metal Hammer, but why has it taken so long to get the magazine brought out in England, or Britain, I should say? Well, because we wanted to plan it properly, for one thing, and it just takes a long time to develop it. And obviously, we wanted Metal Hammer UK to be the best of the three editions, so we really thought it out. So, so what actually happens, let me clarify this point. There's, there's the Metal Hammer that comes out in Germany and Holland. Are they entirely different? Or is it the one magazine that comes out in every? No, language? only partly. Whereas um, we translate part of the stories the Germans come up with, and we uh, put also our own stories, more based on the Dutch market, in there as well. Right. So when so you in your German magazine, you be using some of the stories that Harry comes up with. Yeah, we have an international part, uh, about 50 pages, it's, uh, all, all the same in the issues, and we have got 150 pages in uh, Germany. Uh, that's even more than in Dutch and in, in, uh, okay. England, yeah. And uh, we have a special German part in it. So every every it issue has its own yeah. specific section that will relate to something that's happening that month right. in that territory. Okay, now the thing about Britain, of course, which I don't know if Europe can quite match, is that there 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 is already in existence. Uh, a well-read and good-selling heavy metal. Is that the one that you work for, mate? That is the same, Harry, yes. <laughs> the very same. Oh, which one is it? I don't know. It's the one that begins with Crunch. a K. Oh. Now, 
What I want to ask you is that what do you think Metal Hammer has got to offer? What do you think Metal Hammer has got to offer the regular HM reader that something like Kerrang has? Well, I mean, not meaning to put down Kerrang, which we which we wouldn't. <laughs> is that we feel it's a, it's a much wider breadth. We're taking a much better perspective of it, and we're we're be more defined in what the magazine is doing. We think that well, I think that Kerrang is spreading is spreading the wings far too much. Heavy metal and hard rock is heavy metal and hard rock, and I think anybody who's into heavy metal and hard rock knows what those bands are. In what about my opinion, Kerrang? Are, are veering away from what it. about the early accusations that were levelled at a magazine like Kerrang, which I, I'm sure are now going to be thrown at Metal Hammer, that it's too much like a fanzine, it doesn't have a broad enough spectrum to appeal to a wider readership? Well, we know what we're doing. I mean, and we know we have to sell magazines. The bottom line is the magazine has to be successful to exist. So therefore, it's not a fanzine. It's as simple as that. Fanzine is written by people who don't really know what they're doing, but they are fans of a magazine. I mean, we're, we know what we're doing. That's, that's the difference. All right, Harry, now I'm going to put you on the spot here. Oh, no, man. We've got a new magazine, a new editor. Can you come up with a new piece of music that I could play for the viewers out there in TV land? Well, mate, we've thought about this because you've prompted us. <laughs> and we're going to play Cinderella, and it's called Nobody's, Nobody's Fool. <laughs> Still partying, still metal hammering it. And look what I've found, the biggest disease spreaders in heavy metaldom, the wonderful anthrax! Oh. 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 <laughs> How are you, chaps? Pretty good, pretty All good. All right, styling. Having a good time. Yeah, now, the, the last time I saw you guys was on stage opening for Metallica at the Hammersmith Odeon in London. Good tour? Amazing. Great, great, great tour. Great tour. Sold out. Amazing, Sold out. Sold out tour. Great kids. Great response. Sickness. Out of control like a loose wheel. Best double bill you'll ever have. <laughs> Best double bill you'll ever have in the world. <laughs> Well, it's funny you should mention that because I had a lot of kids talking during the intermission between uh, the show when you played at the Odeon. A lot of kids are saying, well, Metallica are really going to have to do something to better that, you know, which doesn't happen often with support bands, right? Okay, 45 oh, minutes man. we have. We yeah. tried our best. We don't consider ourselves we're a support band. We're not a support band because we're, we're going to headline the same tour next year. So it's just a case to get our feet wet over here, you know, yeah. just get out, break the ground and come back next year and headline. The kids know we're not a support band. We haven't, we haven't band, you know? done any real heavy touring in Europe, you know, this is our first really I mean, you can't call us a support band when in every venue, every night at 7:30, it was already sold out. Not at 8:30. Yeah, all yeah. the kids, 7:30, everyone. All was the there. kids were there at 7:30 watching the show. So, like, like in the states, a lot of times it's Judas Priest, for instance, and someone else. And Judas Priest goes on. His concert starts 9 o'clock. Kids come 10, 10:30. Right. We went on. Every kid was in the place. Every kid. It was packed to the back. Every night. So consistency. So what have you been doing since the tour ended? I mean, you're still hanging out in London. I mean, haven't you got better things to do with your time? Yeah, we hang out. We stayed in Copenhagen for a few days, and we came yeah, back here to London because it's more like home. And we just, uh, and we're leaving on better. Saturday, go back to New York. So what do you think about this Metal Hammer British mag? I mean, you can be honest with me. There's no one listening. What do you yeah, really think about it? Oh, it's great. Metal Hammer's great. They know where it's at. great. Just good luck. Just, really. just put us in the magazine every issue. Yeah. It'll we'll be fine. No problem. No on the cover. On the cover. On the cover. Every issue. Every week. They do a lot more for us than the well, show. Well, it's, it's, it's heartening to hear that honest and sincere appraisal. It really is. It's hard for us to get the magazine. Yeah, we'll clean our noses now. Yeah. All right, I'll tell you sure, what we'll do. Sure. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's have a bit more music, hey? Now, I've been promised a bit of live anthrax. Are we going to get it? I don't think if you've been promised, I suppose. Oh, yeah, all right, come on, let's have a bit of yeah, live anthrax. So. Live anthrax! Don't touch the dial. I've been wandering around the Metal Hammer party here, and lo and behold, I come across one of my all-time favourite lead guitarists, Mr. Scott Gorham. Hello. Hey, Is this, is this, this a nice party or what? Is this great? It's OK, yeah. A bit hot down here, but it's OK. Now, tell me, Scott, it's probably a very old and boring question, but I can't help asking you, seeing as this really is the first time I've seen you since it all happened, but what have you really been up to since uh, Thin Lizzy finally called it a day? Uh, well, it's... Uh, I think it's the first time a lot of people have seen me since uh, I, I quit Thin Lizzy. Uh, I actually took about 18 months off, uh, just completely off everything, playing guitar and the whole deal. And um, mind you, you've been on the road for what ten well, years about or something? Ten, ten years. It's a, it was a long time. You, you figure seven months out of the the year for ten years, it, it tends to waste you a little bit. But um, so I took about eighteen months off, and uh, I went over to Los Angeles 
uh, about uh, a year ago, and I started working on the Super Tramp album. Uh, I actually went to uh, Germany with him on a couple of gigs and got on stage with him and all that. It, it gave me the itch again to, to get back into the whole deal. Do you think for a time you actually lost your your verve for playing live recording? I, I think after you, you've been on the road for uh, for that long, after I mean, in that intense of time, you know, you, you you tend to get a little bit burned, you know. So you need to take a little bit of time. Uh, but. Uh, about three, four months ago, um, uh, I hooked up with a singer named John Fiddler, right? and we started uh, writing songs together, and it, it just all kind of clicked really nice, so everything just seemed to flow really easy from, from both of them. We got a good sort of deal going with each other. Right. And uh, then we added a bass player named Bob Daisley. Well, right. Daisley, yeah, you know Bob. who's played with Gary Moore and Ozzy. Yeah, the whole deal. Right. right and uh, a drummer from uh, Los Angeles named uh, Gary Ferguson. Uh, he, he also, also played play with, with Gary, Gary, right? Right, there you go. Right. That took the whole Gary. Stealing old Gary's yeah. band. <laughs> there you go, right. <laughs> so uh, what we've been doing is we've been uh, sitting down in the studio for the last couple of months. Uh, everybody's like throwing their ideas in and we've just been doing a lot of writing and sorting things out. So does the band have a name yet, Scott? Well, we're sort of going under the working title of Jump the Gun. And is there any possibility of seeing you back on stage? So oh, there's every possibility. I mean, everybody is is itching to get get out on the road and start to do it again, right? especially if probably more me than anybody else. You know. Well, I tell you, it would be great to see you back. I tell you, Scott, thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Can't wait to see you on stage. We don't have any Scott Gorham videos yet. So in the meantime, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll play a bit of classic Thin Lizzy, and this is Massacre from Japan, in fact the band I think from Japan that are really going to break it over the Western world. They're called Loudness and they're here with me right now. I'm going to get the guys to introduce themselves because my Japanese enunciation is terrible. Well, actually, he told a great perfect Japanese name. Well, anyway, my name is Minoru Nihara. I'm a singer of Loudness. My name is Masayoshi, best player. Uh, my name is Murataka Higuchi. My name is Akira Takasaki, guitar player. Please don't ask me how to spell any of those names. <laughs> now, guys, we got your new album, Lightning Strikes, which came out over here, I think, about three months ago. Uh -huh. You're just about to do your first serious tour of Britain and Europe with Saxon. Yeah, that's right. This is first time to go on major tour in England and also Europe, Holland, Belgium. Sweden, it's many countries we're going to play. Is this really where you see the band going? Do you really want to make it as far as possible in the Western world, in Britain and Europe? Uh -huh. But this is it's a fast, yeah, it's fast time major to us. So. Were there any British bands that influenced you particularly when you were began? Uh, we're influenced by Deep Purple. And, uh, you know, this, this guitar player, Akira, he's influenced by Rich Blackmore a lot. And I still hear, listen to uh, uh, Deep Purple a lot. Really? Because that's strange. What, we played a lot of your videos on the show, and personally, whenever I've heard your music, I've been put more in mind of Led Zeppelin or something uh -huh. like that. Well, of course, we're influenced by Led Zeppelin, too. Because I, I love a uh, singer from Led Zeppelin. Robert Plant. Uh, yes, I love him. So tell me, I know in Japan you headline your own shows, but over here you're going to be supporting a British band. Do you see that as a challenge, or are you worried about that? Well, actually, we opened for Motley Crue last year in the U.S. Oh, really? So now, and also we opened for ACDC in this year, but one month ago. So we are used to, to play opening act. And whilst it's a really uh, learning experience for us, you know, to do open for someone like a big band, so, so we're having the time. So what do you think? Do you think the next time that we see you in Britain or Europe, you'll be headlining yourselves? Next time? Well, I, I hope next year, after release uh, for the album. You hope so? Uh -huh. All right, well, I hope so too. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Now we're going to go out on a bit of loudness, and this is yeah. our brand new single. This is called Let It Go. Yes, we're still here at a very fine time we're having. In fact, I've found some rather interesting people to talk to. In fact, a band I'm going to tip for the top. State Trooper, no less. Now, this is Steve. 
This is Gary, Gary Barden. Hello, Old mate. MSG fans will probably know him. This is Jeff. Now, chaps, how are you enjoying the party? Let's get down to the nitty gritty. How are you enjoying the party? <laughs> any, part, any party that's got free drink, we love. We love <laughs> free drinks. Leave the around. No, this is great, actually, mate. This is really happening. There's a lot of people here I haven't seen for at least six whole Seven, days. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think this is really happening. Listen, I must ask you, as it's, it's the, the story of the moment, I understand that you chaps are actually providing the music for the, Rocky Eight, for, yes. for the very next Barry McGuigan Boxing, yeah, World right. Championship Boxing well, match. This is true. Well, as you know, like, Barry's sort of like a, a, real life, a real life Rocky, right? So Apparently he likes his rock music. Oh, he loves it. I've never met anybody that... I'm, I thought Barry was just like a normal music fan, but rock music is his thing, right? All so how, how, did, how did you actually get to meet him and decide that you were going to do the music for his next Strange fight? Strange enough, for the management. Truly management. Yeah, yeah. Which I won't like mention. <laughs> Standard music, but yeah. No, no. no exactly. It was all done in America because all their tapes went out to America, and they bumped into Barry's PR man who heard the tape and knowing Barry who likes rock music, played the tape with Barry. And Barry loved it. What's the song actually called? The Shape of Things to Come. Which is so, ideal. It's it, bang on. It is futuristic. It's. I'm leaving the village. Yeah, it's, 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 it's up to it's, date. It's, 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 it's Barry's thing as well because it's in the shape of things to come. I mean, like Barry is sort of really ready for it. We're not talking about past. We're talking future. Here. We're talking about, yeah, as the song says, the shape of things to come. Right. All right. Well, look, of, I know that Barry McGuigan's a rock music fan, but any of you boys like you know. Boxing fans? Yeah, oh, okay. people around the other couple of times. Who doesn't? I mean, I mean, I've seen this man having a fight with only one human. Of people on Only human. We like to uh, open up occasionally, say hello to people. You know, I mean, no, nothing wrong with no, nothing wrong with a good clear around the edge to anyone, is there? Well, tell me uh, when, and also when, of course. When can we see the band playing live next? Well, we played we last us. night at you the marquee, the marquee last night. <laughs> which I won't mention. Ah. <laughs> the wonder we got a few, few things coming up, you know, sort of in the next month or so, um, just to keep things going. Because basically, all we want to do now is work on getting everything spot on and going out and doing the big, which will be pretty soon. Sounds good. I shan't detain you any further. Thank you, mate, because I'm yeah. bloody running out of time, mate. The bar's closing in. Two <laughs> seconds. Enjoy the party. I think we're going to go back. Remember to the Thank you, mate. Right Be good. See you next year.